had a question about the FCC, really, and how this problem's been kind of set up by media consolidation and the lack of enforcing some of the rules that have been in existence for years that just kind of the administrations have watered down or ignored. And, you know, like Time Warner merged with AOL back in the 90s. Now uh, Comcast is NBC Universal, and now they're taking over Time Warner, and, and so on and so on. And so we're getting this giant. It's because at the end of the day, it's the content. The, having wires on the ground is one thing that's great, but what do you send over it? Movies, music, you know, people want things off of it. Who controls that drives, you know, that's the last leg in the tripod there, controlling that pipe that gets it to your house. Then you really have total, you know, malefaction control over, over what's going on. So, that, I mean, what, how can we roll some of that media consolidation back, or is that just Pandora's box and it's just done? Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to roll back media consolidation. I mean, I, I'm no fan of it myself. I spent... 25 years of my career stopped trying to stop consolidation, not being very successful, I might add. I think what we want to do at the FCC is create opportunities for new players through spectrum policy, through community broadband, through you know things like poll attachments, at, while at the same time looking very hard. Look, we've got two big transactions in front of us, Comcast, Time Warner Cable, ATT, DirecTV. I can't say much more than, uh, than we're looking at it, but we're looking at them very, very hard. And, um, you know, I know you guys don't follow this, but we've been asking for tens of thousands of pages of documents from those companies. And we're looking at the programming contracts that they enter into, that the, you know, AT&T and Comcast enter into with programmers. So we're looking at these transactions harder, I think, than any FCC has ever looked at transactions. And I'll say another thing. We have an enforcement bureau that is run now by a prosecutor. Okay? In, the, in the past, our enforcement bureau has been sort of like, you know, I don't, not all that important to the agency. But Chairman Wheeler cares deeply and has hired this guy from Kamala Harris in, in California's office. He's a prosecutor. He's already gotten, you know, several tens of millions of dollars, well, actually several hundreds of millions of dollars from a couple of big companies for slamming and cramming. You know, that's basically third-party charges that you didn't ask for that land up on your bill. Or sometimes telephone companies just switch you to another telephone company without your authorization. They, we find Verizon for a, a violation of our privacy rules. So this guy is hot to trot and really looking for cases to bring when our rules are violated. But I will say that's the exception, not the rule. But Chairman Wheeler's mantra is competition, competition, competition. So these, these transactions are going to be looked at with the finest tooth comb that have, have ever been put to a transaction before. And, and let me just add, the, the, the Chairman is also looking at how you define over-the-top services as a competitor to traditional video and content. And as you all see with streaming companies like Netflix or, or Hulu or as HBO and Amazon enter, that really is the, the new competitive force on the content side. Uh, the commission is taking steps. Congress needs to do uh, something called retrans reform so that you change the old laws of how uh, the broadcasters negotiate with different distributors for their content. And that would, that would help repair a broken market in video uh, programming and, and video content. The other big thing is the cost of video is so high for our new entry go, deploying new networks that they're not building those networks because you need not only internet service but video offerings. They have to be bundled together. And if we can fix the video market, it will help deploy new networks because it, it lowers the cost of a key input, programming content. And so that's something that we're trying to, to work to achieve in a, in a broad reform congressionally and to work with the FCC to repair that market. Just real quick, I think there's a little bit of an interesting twist happening in the world today where, sure, you've got the agglomeration of content or content or whatever you want to call it, media. At the same time, you also have a rise of the cord cutters who are going left, right, and every which direction to get their media. So, you know, I almost wonder if uh, the timing, you know, it looks like it's all big, bad, and scary, but the reality is they're going to be irrelevant in a couple of years anyway. I don't know. I think it's something to watch. 